curiosity for my own sake, how many of you did uh, respond to all three? Just by show of hands. How many of you just responded to the first two? How many of you just responded to one of the three? Okay. Okay, so um, before we actually start, a few quick questions for you, because one of the things I told you at the beginning is I would try to model, as best as I understand them, good practices. What, what was your um, what was your reaction with that elevated voice that I used at the beginning? If you remember that, when I just said hello, everybody, and kind of like walked into the room, is that you remember that? What was your thinking? I like that. It you like less it? tension. It, it made it more calm for you. Yeah. Kind of like eased, eased it. Yeah. yeah. Big smile. Something that you know, if you give that over to the children, they feel a little bit more relaxed. Anything else? Did that? Are you supposed to give that to children? I mean, uh, you could. You could. You might do it a little bit differently. You might just be more of a hearty shell of a You know, and you don't have to do it all the time, but on occasion, I wouldn't do it every day. I use it on, once in a while, just especially middle of the week. You know, you've had to endure. endure I'm sorry, that's it's only two syllables. Let me know. Uh, you've had to endure only two days of me so so far. So I figure, you know, let's start it with a little bit uh, something more lactic. In this way, you know, uh, in the to the degree that I was feeling a little monotonous, I wanted to jumpstart the energy in the room. That was sort of my kavana. Why were you raising your voice, uh, calming children? Um, it's well, I think he was calm. Well, actually, why don't you say? Why did you feel that that calmed you? Uh, he wasn't imposing. Any, he wasn't imposing anything. I'll get scared to say something. No, but you were saying being loud and friendly, excited. Yeah, so maybe, maybe you would use a different word than calm, but maybe you would use um, relax in the sense of by having a kind of like an upbeat tone, it, it removes some of the tension from the room. Potential tension. I, I'm, I'm just speculating. It gets more of my attention. It grabbed your attention. It gets more of uh -huh. okay. Now, of course, if I grab your attention with an actual anticipatory set, then that would focus you as well. So that sort of leads me into the next question that I have for you is, what is your thinking about a one-minute paper just as a concept before we actually talk about what you wrote on your paper? As a concept for who? For your kid? As a teaching concept, as a tool for your students. We have it, I have it over here. We really didn't get into it yesterday because time didn't permit it. But this is one of the, the question was, how can teachers help, right? We talked about note taking. So note taking is a student's job. It's not a teacher's job. But how can teachers help nonetheless? So we talked, for example, about speaking slowly. And we also said, what can we do to set up the students for success with their note taking? Maybe giving them an outline or something that doesn't require that they write everything down. That's this over here, where they have the lines to the side. So in addition to that, we can utilize a one-minute paper. Now, what, in what way will a one-minute paper help a student Think about note taking, but thinking about helping students in general, please. It's uh, they're organizing. It's they're organizing. organizing to the student. Okay, how, how so? Because they have to pick out what is the most important thing, what they're still shaky about, and you know, bring, I think I'm so, It's one so it's much. actually one of the highest uh, it's it's an evaluation of sorts. It's one it's the highest level of Lewin's taxonomy from the cognitive um, processes, which means what your brain does, the different functions of your brain, where the lowest levels is just being able to understand information and, and, and put it right back. To be able to do things with that information, the highest level is evaluation. So if I'm asking you to tell me the most significant thing that you learned today, you are going through the process of evaluating. You may have seen graphic organizers that ask you to rank. Ranking says most chashuv, and then next, and then next, etc. Okay, so that is an, that's a cognitive process. What else does it do besides for forcing you to filter and, and sort of rank? Anything else that, it, that you felt that it accomplishes? Before we talk about what you actually wrote down, please. Two things. First of all, the student knows to walk away with something. Yes. And second of all, a lot of times it happens to a student is um, you ask them what they learn. I don't know. Or say, can you answer the test? I don't know. So uh -huh. you tell the kids, one second, there's 10 questions. Do you know question A? Yeah. Well, question seven I got stuck at, where the, the kids could be able to um, um, fancy word, compart com compartmentalize. Yeah, that word. Um, to be able to put this, I understand, this I don't understand. To put things in categories, this I, uh, and it, it gives the kid uh, confidence on what he knows, and he feels so much more Wow, that's very powerful. I'd like to elaborate on that for just a moment. One of the workshops that I give is called the Art of Oral Testing. 
and um, it's something that I use in my classroom where I, I don't want to delve too much into it, although it's a, it's a, it's a wonderful system, for, at least for me. Um, what I would do is I would take the Gemara and divide it into pieces ahead of time. And as we learned it, we learned piece one, piece two, piece three, with the associated Rashi, the Tosis, and whatever it might be. And so with, besides for the ultimate benefit of the Old Testament process, which was a skill orientation, meaning I wanted them to read, I wanted them to touch, I wanted them to put the pauses, the commas, the hula in the right places, which told me that they could be a balabas with the Gemara, that they're not just um, understanding concepts and putting it down on paper, but that they have a, a wherewithal to make a laning, not a laning, but at least to read it back to me and to do it with confidence. One of the pieces that was really beneficial about the pieces, one of the benefits, was the fact that they could take ownership of piece one and piece two, because what I ultimately would do was give them a checklist, and they would have to check off the pieces that they were prepared to read, and they got more points for more that they checked. They fell on the, the basic mm -hmm. yeah. mahalach. So what's nice about it, not only did they give them ownership of the, of the testing process, because they didn't know which piece they would get, but they knew which pieces they would or would not even have shaykhahs to, but it also gave them a certain degree of closure because I know piece one, I can now move on to piece 